Hello and welcome to the Back to Life Chiropractic Workshop Series. I'm Dr. Schuler, and this is the Eat Well Workshop. Actually, I have the Think Well, the Move Well, and the Coming Up with Your Health Score, and it's, and how to use your checklist. And we have a YouTube channel that has all these videos and other things, and everything that we're talking about, all the forms and everything you need is found on our website, uh, Back to Life Chiropractic KY.com. So right here. So, let's get into this. So, um, uh, if you ever need any information from us, um, you can always contact us, or you can just, there's contact uh, uh, forms throughout our website, backtolifecarpredict.com. You know, you can always um, just contact us that way or you could call us up but one of the things that you need to get is the workbook and so the workbook is on our website you can download it um, your work might have given you this if you're with a work group but um, a lot of things that we're going to go over are on here so it's a nice thing to have it has all the GI foods and it has let's see here it has like the rules and the portions, you know, in there. And it has um, different meal ratios. There you go. And then we have the innate eating questionnaire. And we have the tracking form that you, know, you can come up with your stuff. So it is a nice thing to have, and you can download that. <coughs> um, Another good thing after this is to come up with the health score workshop. That's another good uh, um, video to watch, you know, once you get this one done. So one of the nice things about the Eat Well, Think Well, Move Well workshops and one of the things we do at Back to Life is we are trying to make a habit. So it's something that, you know, you can reproduce, you can do, you know, if you put a little time into it, you know, we give you the why, that we give you the what and how to do things. And so it all actually becomes a habit, so you can keep doing it and keep doing it. You know, it's not something like you buy a certain food or you get a surgery or taking a medicine, and once you're not doing it anymore, you can't stay with it. So this is one of the nice things, you know, where it's a little bit of time in the beginning and knowledge, but then once you learn it, then it's a, it becomes a habit. So one of the things we're going to go over through first is why. You know, it's important to have the why before the what or the how to do something or you won't be able to follow through on something. So, you know, so one of the big things that you see in most patients and people is stress. So, you know, you know, America's number one health problem is stress. You know, it's caused by 85% of all human illnesses and disease. And so if you have a lot of stress, so when you have stress and you're trying to get out of a stressful situation, you know, for survival, you know, then, you know, the stress cycle is a good thing. It's a burst of energy, it's heightened memory function, it's a burst of increased immunity, and it actually lowers your sensitivity of pain. You know, your adrenals produce cortisol, and then it starts to, you know, get you in your flight fight mechanism. But the bad thing is when you have chronic stress and you don't get rid of it, then, you know, you keep producing this and producing this. And then you get impaired conscious performance, suppressed thyroid function blood sugar imbalances, decreased bone density, high blood pressure, lowered immunity, and increased abdominal fat. And so one of the big things is the visceral adipose, adipose tissue that we want to deal with in the eat well. Because visceral adipose tissue actually is a huge endocrine system in your body that produces more cortisol, estrogen, and um, inflammation markers. So uh, America will spend about 2.6 trillion uh, this year and healthcare, and that's about eight thousand three hundred per person. So for a family of four, that's thirty-three thousand dollars. And so, you know, so one of the reasons why we want to start eating well and thinking well, and moving well, is because we want to save money. So it might cost you a little bit more money to buy some nicer, you know, less processed foods, and some other things like that. But then in the long run, it saves you money. So, so. Uh, so, you know, in America, we spend more money on healthcare than probably anybody else. But we're so, as you would think, with all that money and all the diagnostic and all the, the hospitals and things we have, 
the prescriptions that we would be one of the highest ranking um, uh, healthiest uh, nations but we are ranked 37th so you know a lot of things that we are trying to do and prescriptions and surgeries and the you know easy fast um, um, the quick fixes you know they aren't working so so one of the whys we want to do something is we you know we got to stop the system that we're doing and have a different attitude so you know f so besides you know having stress and dealing with stress and not getting sick and um, saving money and you know just trying to lower cost um, we got to come up with an individual thing for uh, why we want to do something because if you don't have a reason why you want to make a change and eat well you're not going to do it for a long time so before we get into the what and how we are going to try to get you to think up a little bit more about the why so one of the things I think about is you know would you go or rather go through life in a car like this or a car like this and so you know you might get to the same place but it would be a lot better in the in the nicer car so people don't realize you know where they are you know are they moving toward this way or they're moving this way you know are you are you living the optimal health 100 percent function wellness <clears throat> or are you you know are you on multiple medications poor quality of life you know sometimes for a while you're in the in between here and you kind of in a comfort zone so one of the nice things that we provide is we do do testing to help you figure out where you are on this health score so and that's how we do the surface emgs and the so but that's always available for you so you know one of the things that you really need to sit down and think about why you want to do it is it for your grandkids or your children or for your you know you're the sole provider so you need to make money so you need to be healthy um, you know you need to really come sit down and think about the why and write those down and that sheet is on our website so next we'll get into the knowledge of what to do so um, food is like fluids used to run a car you need to put the right amounts uh, and the right types in the car you know you wouldn't stick you know and I actually did this once when I was young <laughs> I just turned 16 actually <laughs> we drained all my friend and I drained all the engine coolant and, I mean all the oil and then we put uh, we put engine coolant in it and it did not let the car do very well so so you know it's very it's very important to put the right ratios in and the right types of you know gas in the gas tank because you know you know Food is fuel, to, is the energy to make your body go. So, you know, it is a fake, you know, you need a, a nice meal ratio of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And so, you know, your body does, you know, produce energy. So, you know, these types of three types of foods in the right ratios help you go, actually help you burn energy, helps you make you feel good. So, you know, your macronutrients. Um, is what makes you um, go. And a lot of people don't realize, like, they think they're eating well, but they're not because they're not getting the right proportions and they're not doing it in the right amount of times. And so that is one of the big things that you see where people don't, they think they should be losing weight or they think they should be eat, they're eating well, but they should be feeling better, but they're not doing it with the right ratios. And so we're going to go through these um, ratios. So, you know, you need carbs, proteins, and fats in each meal. And you got to make sure you get them in each meal. And so, everyone's a little bit different. So, um, this changes a little bit for everyone. But we, you know, we have the Nate eating questionnaire. And we have some other forms to help you figure out all this. But in general, this is a good one. Um, if you can't fill out those forms, that helps people. You know, and we've seen people's blood work get, you know, better you know following this zone diet here so but you need carbs proteins and fats so and then we're just gonna go through this we're gonna go through each one and so we're not gonna spend too much time on the slide but I like to go into grams when we talk about these 30 grams 20 grams and 10 grams but this will vary a little so But you need these three. So, the Nate Eating Questionnaire and the Will Russo Tracking Sheet um, help you come up with 
the different ratios. I actually came up with the Nate Eden questionnaire because you know when you look when we looked at workshops or when we looked at like wellness plans for eating, they varied a lot. But so and so I noticed like some things work better over my 23 years of working with people. Some people need different ratios and different meal types. And so we came up with the Nate Eating Questionnaire. So when you fill up the Nate Eating Questionnaire, it's not what you're doing because you have to because of your schedule or your kids or your job. This is what how you would eat if you could eat the way you wanted to. And so you got to fill it up that way because that helps us actually fill up. This adult meal tracking sheet, and we have a child uh, tracking sheet too. <coughs> but but eventually we're going to break all this down, different ratios into carbs, fats, and proteins, and how many meals you're going to do. And so it's a nice system that actually helps you, you know, eat what you're supposed to be eating, and um, and you're not doing anything bad to the body where you're starving it or making it have so many other things that it has to do something else. You're actually trying to eat right, and then you're eating according to the way you, you know, innately need to eat. So. So just like how your car has fuel, like different ways to see if you need more gas or no more fuel, you know, there's different tests that you can do. You know, you can look at your body composition, you can look at your pH, you can look at um, blood glucose, hemoglobin. There's a lot of blood uh, things that you can do on our GetFit program. We do blood work. Um, you can look at your visceral adipose and your hip waist ratio. So, you know, we have all these different ways to, to come up to see if you're actually doing things right. Because if you're actually eating right and moving well and thinking well, you know, you shouldn't be living a wellness lifestyle. So we use a lot of different little tests in Back to Life to see if you're doing that. So. so one of the things that we can look at is body mass index. You're looking at your height, your weight to height ratios. And we have a BMI chart on our Back to Life chiropractic website. You just put that in there. So... But you can be overweight, obese, or you can be in the normal range. So, but these charts are all on our Back to Life system. But this is an easy way to see if you're eating well. Another one is a great one is the waist hip ratio. You know, so you take your, it's the best way to measure yourself is measure your hips and your, and then your, um, where your belly button is. So your waist and your, uh, and your uh, hips and then but try to stand the same way each time you do it so you want to put your feet together it's the best way but remember vas vas visceral adipose tissue is the largest endocrine gland in your body and it produces inflammation estrogen and cortisol so this is one of the main things that we need to work on but it's one of the easier things to measure so and then another one um with the diagnostic criteria, so here it is, waist circumference, you know, less than 40 inches for men and less than 35 inches for women. And then, so that's one of the pre, you know, this is one way to see if you have metabolic syndrome. But abdominal obesity is an easy thing to track. So another thing we track is pH balance. You know, if you're eating right and you're exercising right, and you're eating the right ratios, your pH should stay um, normal. And so this is an easy way to see if you're doing that. So, and then, so now we're going to get into carbohydrates. So remember, this is one of the things that varies a lot from people to people. And so I really believe that if you're going to do this, you should do the innate eating questionnaire. It's something I came up with, but it just helps you figure out, you know, should it be a little bit more on carbs, proteins, or fats? You know, or if you do more meals or less meals. So, but that would change this a little bit. What we're getting ready to talk about if it's changed. But this is a good way. Um, if you do follow this, this is actually a good way to get um, lose your visceral adipose tissue and get back in shape. So, carbohydrates provide four calories per gram. Carbs required by the brain and nervous system. So you need carbs. So you just can't get rid of them. And so most things, breads, pasta, cakes, and cookies, but fruits and vegetables are the best ways to get your carbohydrates. And the portion size, you know, for each meal would be about the size of your fist. So that would be about 30 grams. You know, this will vary a little bit according to your innate eating questionnaire. 
And then when you're looking at labels, when we're trying to figure out the carbs, um, you want to look at the carbohydrates. And so carbohydrates are here, proteins are here, fat are here, and then all the ingredients, you know, are down below. So, but one of the nice things about carbohydrates is fiber. So you can subtract the fiber out of the total carbohydrates. And so that will give you like your, what, how many carbs you're eating. And it's always important to look at the servings per container. And then if you've never read labels before, you know, there's actually a video on our website that helps you read labels and goes through this a little bit more. So, but the main thing is for this one here, it's 31 grams is two servings. So if you only eat one serving, that would be, you know, half of that. So, so the bad thing about um, eating too many carbs is that your body can only take so much in, but when it's done right and you eat the right amounts, it produces insulin to the right amount of glucose goes into the body it performs its function and and it gets absorbed and your body's functioning properly and when you take in way too much sugar your body produces too much insulin then eventually you know your body becomes insulin independent and you become diabetic but but until then your body can't get all that carbohydrates in, so it gets stored away as visceral adipose tissue. And so, and then you're still not getting, eventually you're not getting enough blood sugar in to make your body function properly, and then you get sluggish and tired because you're spiking up and down. And that's called metabolic syndrome, which is really common now in America. So a lot of people might feel this mental fogginess, low energy, depression, increased fat, and increased muscle mass. So, but carbohydrates is one of the biggest um, causes of this. So, and then you can identify patients with, or people with metabolic syndrome, the waist circumference that we talked about, triglycerides, greater than 150 HDLs, um, which are your good ones, you know, should be less than 40 and then less than 50. And that, oh, that's the ratio, I'm sorry the ratios right there and then blood pressure you know is another way and blood glucose so according to the CDC if you have two of these symptoms you have double the risk of death from coronary heart disease and if you have four of the above you have 3.5 times the risk so that's why it's important to do your um, your score sheets can you see where you are on this because a lot of people think they're doing a lot better than what they are so so way too much sugar is a bad thing. Understanding the glycemic index and glycemic load. Um, so, you know, the glycemic index is the measurement of carbohydrate quality. So the ideal is 55. And so it's like a reflection of um, when you take in a, like a food, like how much um, uh, energy is released or how much, you know, sugar is released into your body. So, and then glycemic load is the quantity of it, and your idea is less than 10. So, so this is important because, you know, certain foods produce, you know, have a better, you know, there's certain qualities of carbohydrates that are better for you, and then some produce a lot more effect on blood sugar levels, and some produce less, and so it's important to figure out what these are, so you don't get caught in a vicious cycle. So the nice thing about this is there's charts on this, you know, and eventually you'll just know what they are. But the top 10 low GI foods are apples, berries, barley, grapefruit, nuts, oatmeal, green peas, tomatoes. And then the high food ones are, of course, candies, cookies, juices, white potatoes, chips, sweetened, sweetened cereal, sweetened soda, sweet snacks, white breads, and bagels, and white And so, you know, there's a lot of research nowadays and most people have heard it so but increased sugar causes cancer you know there's a lot of studies about this and type 2 diabetes um, all show that lead to colon cancer so how many uh, teaspoons of sugar in a 20 ounce soda so how many teaspoons of sugar in a 20 ounce soda and then uh, bonus question is what's the average pH of a soda diet or regular so, 20 ounce soda has 17 teaspoons of sugar. That's 
the average teenager drinks 600 <laughs> cans per year. They to increase obesity, depletes the body of vital nutrients. And, you know, if, like, the rule of the car again is if that, if you, you shouldn't put something in your body that it's not going to make it run right. Just like you wouldn't put a certain type of gas in, a, in your car or something. So it wouldn't run right. So soda has increased, you know, acidity of three, which makes you super inflamed, which leads to um, um, being sick and disease, lowered immunity, you know. So, so one of the things you really got to take out of your diet is sodas. So the next meal ratio that we want to concentrate on is proteins. Proteins provide four calories per gram. Um, you need proteins because they actually help your body um, heal and grow. And so they're found dairy food, soy, chicken, beef, and fish are good protein sources with widely varying amounts of fat. So a lot of times your fat and your proteins go together, so you got to be careful what you're eating when you're doing your fats. Um, egg whites contain 4 grams of protein and is complete and optimal protein. Cottage cheese is a very convenient protein source. Uh, requires, you, your body requires one half to one gram per pound of body weight. So you're, you know, so that's why we use the Nate Eating Questionnaire because what you're doing and how much you're working out and, and um, how you like to eat actually affects this a little bit. So the portion size equals the palm of the hand, so that's what we're going for. Portion size should be about the palm of your hand. So you should opt for at least 15 grams of protein per meal, no more than 40 grams. It just depends how many meals you're doing on how you like to eat. Um, remove visible fat from the protein, but necessary. You don't have to, you know, right? Remove it, kind of like what my kids and I like to do. But, <laughs> but, but you know, it is good to if you see a big amount of it, you can remove it. So when you're looking at your food labels, um, proteins. Are found here so this one here is five grams and the servings per container is two so if you ate two or whatever this was it would give you you know 10 grams of protein so that protein is different you know for everyone that we just talked about that so remember to use your sheets so you know your protein is very important a lot of people like you know like try to decrease protein but it does increase um, protein just kind of you need to increase it with how much you're working out so this will change sometimes sometimes when you first start the program um, you're not exercising as much but sometimes as you start to exercise more you'll need more protein and then sometimes people are doing way too much protein like protein drinks and things but they're not working out that hard or they were working out hard at one time but then they change and so you know you always need to look at that and make sure you're eating the right amount so that could vary a little bit so so one of the things that we've noticed too is you know like proteins can affect your um, pH level so that's one of the reasons why we use you know pH to see if you're eating correctly um, because if you're eating like a lot of just meats and sometimes you can get real acidic or, or if you're eating exercising a lot and eating a lot of meats you can get real acidic but that will you know that can cause you a lot of health problems so you know it's something that we want to keep monitoring and that's why like the different combinations is really important so you can see if you're eating a lot of meats and you're working out a lot then you're gonna to have to increase this too so So it's important to always be checking that. So um, next is fat. Everyone's different. So you know, fill out your innate question, eating questionnaire. Always help you do that. So fats provide nine calories per gram. <coughs> you know, oil and butter are pure fats. One uh, tablespoon of oil has 14 grams of fat and provides 126 calories. Um, animal fats equals omega-6 fats. Example of butter and meat. Um, Non-animal fats are omega-3 fats. They're nut seeds such as flax and avocados. Fat is essential in hormone production, so you need fat. And fat is a way to, you know, suppress some of your hungry feelings um, because it is providing a lot of calories. And um, so portion size is one tablespoon 
per meal. So peanut butter, olive oil, or one fourth cup of walnuts, flax seeds. Um, so you want to opt for less than 10 grams per meal. This varies a little bit according to your innate in question, eating questionnaire. You want to avoid all trans fats listed as partially hydrogenated oils on ingredients list. And you want to keep your saturated fats down. Not necessary to completely eliminate as animal products have saturated fats. So when you're looking at your fats, you know, this is the area over here in the label, so you want to read 12 grams of fat. So this may be, you would think this would be really good, but then if it has two servings per container, so, and you ate both servings, then you just ate 24 grams of fat. So that's where you got to be careful with this. You got to look at the servings and, your, and what you're eating right there. And then I'll show you like the trans fats and the saturated fats. So, so remember we want to avoid the trans fats because they they were produced in order for things to have longer storage life, but they break down. You know, they just they're, not, they're harmful for your body. So that's why you want to avoid those, and that's why they actually put them. You know, now they actually list that there right there, trans fats. So. Uh, Trans fats. So one of the things that you really want to look at when you're looking at food labels is you're looking for the word trans fats. And you're, you know, if it has a lot of different words that you don't see on there, um, you probably should avoid it too. So um, that's why it's really important to start reading labels. So when you first start the Eat Well program, then you, you know you're gonna spend a little bit more time because you're gonna be looking at the food labels like the carbs, proteins, fats, the servings. So, but one of the things you really want to look for is the trans fats like in in these um, labels here. So, so cuz it's the bond structure in the trans fats. I, I think if it doesn't break down as easily, then it gets through past the brain barrier and then causes a lot more problems it causes cancer, heart disease. Um, you know, most European countries they actually limited you know, unfortunately, McDonald's has increased it. So, but that's just something you need to look at. So, when you're looking at the food labels, and you look down here, and then start reading the ingredients, and then they place the ones with that you that the highest amounts first, and then it keeps going down and down. So, this might be one you want to avoid, especially it has corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, all that stuff. So lots when you get so many things you can't even understand it. Might be something that you probably don't want to eat. So inflammation. Unfortunately, those who live in the Western society, you know, we consume a high omega six to omega three fatty acids ratios. You know, they're saying that we're like ten point one twenty five to one, where you know we need to be more. We need to be about a four to one omega six to omega three fatty acids. Remember, omega threes are the precursor to everything that's anti-inflammatory. So if you're eating a lot of um, uh, fatty foods that are bad for you, that make you inflamed. So you know your goal is to be more in this ratio here. So and this is you no, know, we're talking about fats here. So you know in America, you, know, you hear about inflammation a lot nowadays, and so. Uh, they say 75% of all Americans have silent inflammation. They just don't realize, you know, that they're they're inflamed. So I mean, that's one of the reasons why we look at the pH and you know, like the visceral adipose. It's so important to look at these things. So, but one of the things that you we do do in our um, program is the omega threes. Oops, let's clear that. So, sorry about that. So, but we need to increase our EPA DHA consumption, which is the omega threes in our diets. You know, and we need we need to displace the prostaglandin E2. That's one of the inflammatory markers. And um, so, but we need to reduce body fat, insulin stored, all that stuff. So, the main thing is to start eating well, take care of itself, and then taking omega three fatty acids. And so that. You know, omega-3, like wild fish and flaxseed oils, what omega-3s are fat them, and some vegetables. So when you're looking at um, uh, just maintenance, you're doing one to two grams of it. And then when you're actually trying to lower your cholesterol, 
or um, you got to take more grams of it, and then if you're in pain, you got to take more grams. And then you know, that's one of the reasons why you got to take a lot of it, and um, you know, make sure it's mercury free. So all the ones we sell are mercury free. So you know, now we've gotten past you know the knowledge of what to do, and so sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming. And I'm not as detailed oriented as maybe some people that are into nutrition because I, I know all these three factors play into it. And so I know that if you keep learning this, eventually it just becomes a habit. And then you just start to do the things, you know, and the more like I think when I first started teaching nutrition, I would like really get into that stuff. But I must admit, even sometimes I'll forget uh, some of the research and all that. And so because this has become such a habit, I just know that what I'm doing is right. And then I'm, I continue on it. So, But in the beginning, it is really not good to really try to understand, you know, the proteins, meals, and fats, and what they're doing. And then, like, the more you know, the more actually you'll be motivated because you'll figure out all the thing, terrible things that are you're eating and what you shouldn't be eating. So and now we're going to get into like the skill, of how to do these things, and then you know these three things will form a habit. And so you know, it might look a little bit overwhelming over those last few slides, but we'll pull it all together. And then once you kind of just stick with it, then you will form a habit, and it just gets to be common sense. And then you actually know what's going on. It takes you a few seconds to look at a label, so don't get too stressed about all that. So. Because we don't want cortisol levels to get too high. So, so what we're going to do next is the skill. So, eating habits, nutritional and lifestyles, the skill to do. And so, the nice thing about this is all these forms are in our um, um, our websites. But one of the things that you, you need to you need to make sure you need to plan, like plan, plan, plan. Like each week, you need to plan. You always need to be be ready so and then you need to figure out how many meals you need to do and you need to be prepared that you're each day you have those many meals ready for you with protein carb and healthy source so a lot of times you know it's easy to do three meals and then um, most people that can continue on this and you're busy if, if you have a really busy schedule like so innately you need to be eating five or six meals but your body I mean your work doesn't let you be able to take more time off to have two more meals like I use the meal replacement shakes um, a lot of times in my office and so that's something that you know you'll figure out how to make and it's real easy but it is a way if your lifestyle doesn't let you be able to, to eat as many um, make as many foods that you would like so it doesn't take too long to, to do a week's menu but you need to always make sure you have the staples and um, so, and then uh, one of our personal trainers, she made this up and she was super, is super healthy and is super healthy, great cook. And so a lot of these ideas are hers. Um, so these are uh, just certain things that she just thought you should have. So tuna packs, Kroger brands, carb yogurts, Kroger yogurts, um, fiber. Fiber is one of the things that really helps you lower your carbohydrates. So you got to really start looking at your fibers. They're always in the food labels. Um, Low-fat cheese sticks, pair of these, with the apple grapes. So, you know, you can make the right. So in the beginning, <clears throat> I use a Excel sheet where you can start putting down your meal ratios. Probably do a video on that sometime. But I just kind of have you write down the things that you are eating. And then sometimes you can just modify that. Because they say the average person um, eats the same about like the same types of foods all the time. They have like five to ten meals that they eat all the time. So you do, sometimes you just you know, take those and make them healthy. And sometimes you'll just notice like that might be just a meal that you should be a cheat meal, not a normal meal. So we try not to use frozen meals. You know, every so often, <clears throat> I guess a frozen meal is better than eating fast food. So, you know, you might have one of those stored away so you can have that if you're in a really big rush. Um, it's great to have lots of small containers because, you know, you're doing more smaller meals and then it's, you're trying to get the different ratios. And so 
you know, lots and lots of small containers. And I am not the biggest about Tupperware, but you got to have tons of Tupperware and little containers, you know, and then be prepared to have these in little baggies. And they actually have some nice little baggies that actually tell you how many ounces are in them. So. Let's see here. Energy habits. All right. Mill replacement bars are good. You know, you got to make sure they have the right ratios. And you got to make sure um, they don't have too much sugar in them. Or, and sometimes they'll have a lot of sugar proteins. But these are things like they're good to have. But I like the shakes better because you can actually have more fruits and things in there. So we use the Ultra Mill replacement shakes. And we use J-Rop. And so ultimate, the Ultra Meal Shakes are nice. They're actually a, a food, um, they're a biomedical food because they're actually been proven to, to do what they do. And uh, But they actually are close to the right ratio, so you don't even have to mess around with them. So they have proteins, fats, and carbs. And then usually when you add like a little bit of your um, you know, liquid, then it gets right there where you need to be. I use the J-Robs because I... I'm lactose intolerant and I iron makes me sick and J Rob is just egg white protein. And I use the with no sugar, no nothing, it's just plain egg white protein. So um, nuts are good ways to get fats and they're actually a good, you know, source of snacks. Um you should prep all your vegetables, fruits, and meats. Just go ahead and just go ahead and get them cut in the right proportions, and cook them, cut them, get them ready to go. Have them ready instead of eating, you know, like chips and other things and fast, you know, fast foods. Um, it's good to get a small cooler, or if you can afford a Yeti, then you know that keeps your that keeps your foods cold. But you, you, if you're really taking this seriously, and if you have kids that are on the run then you need to get a cooler and have lots of foods and snacks and waters and your drinks all in there and just take them wherever you go. So, you know, so uh, the lady, the trainer that did this, Chandra, she just always had a cooler. So we all started carrying our coolers around. And um, it's just nice because when you're at a big crunch and you run out of time, then you got all your foods with you. So and you don't want to use one of your cheap meals. Because you get you know a cheat day, which is three cheat meals a week, and you don't want to use your cheat meal on a day that you just didn't weren't prepared because you would like to use it maybe on a date night or you know you're going to a party or something. So, but just be prepared. Be prepared. So, and then uh, you know, so the main thing is like. You always want to be eating. You want to be in the right hours. You want to keep eating because it actually burns fat and burns visceral adipose tissue off. And then, um, and then you use your cheat meals. You know when you're gonna go to an event or to a party or maybe to a ball game or something. But cheating does not mean overeating. But cheating cheat meals are very important. And you you know you get three a week. Three no three meals. You get three meals per week. Uh, three days but they're important because they actually did a lot of research on that because a lot of people don't want to do it because they're doing so well but it actually does help your body get a little bit more get a little bit more energy it's something that's real important to do is actually eat your cheat meals you gotta have a good attitude and you know and just stick with it because as you learn the foods and the labels and the carbohydrate carbohydrate ratios and the local glycemic foods it's maybe overwhelming at first, but then it just gets to be real easy. And then, like I said, you know, there's always people eat all the same stuff all the time. So, so eventually you'll just have your meals. A magic bullet blender. I love these. They're individual, and I use those every day. Um, skillets are really good because you're cooking more. Apple slicers always make it easier. Lots of little containers. Um, it's good to, if you're starting out and you haven't cooked a lot, to get some cookbooks. So here's a list of different books. Now there's lots of cool apps that they have. So 
So remember, when you're looking at carbohydrates, you want to use the glycemic index at first, and then eventually you'll just get to know them. But remember, glycemic index of 55 um, or below and 10 or less on the glycemic load. And then proteins, you know, you, you want to do wild uh, game, wild food, free range, you know, not a lot of antibiotics, not injected. You know, there's a lot of things out there. So you want to make sure you're looking at the labels and how they're done. Uh, you want to use 100% whole wheat bread items only. Whole wheat English muffins and bagels are really good. Tortillas, there's lots and lots of tortillas now. They have a lot of fiber in them and more protein. That They've done a lot better job on that. Uh, <clears throat> so that's a, a good way to do it. So proteins are chicken breast, turkey breast. I mean, there's lots and lots of different things out there that help you get your proteins in and that are, are that are healthy and tasty. And fats are olive oil, flaxseed oil, nuts, pumpkin seeds. The carbohydrates are all right here. We have a list of these in our workbook, so you can look through these. So, but the lower they are, the more you can eat. So, there you go. Unlimited. So, here's some other things that are good to do that um, she liked. I don't like any artificial sweeteners personally. Um, but, the, you know, you can, the more sauces that you can find, then that it's easier to be. I think so. And then here's dairy. Skim milk, low fat cheese sticks, low carbs, proteins, you know, um, unfortunately being lactose intolerant, there's lactose free milk, things like that, but I just don't use a lot of dairy products to get my proteins. So freezer, strawberries, blackberries, it's good to have lots of um, vegetables and lots of fruits put in your protein drinks, um, this makes it easy and they're and healthy especially if you like sweets like I do then the the protein drinks help me a lot much better than like I haven't really found that many protein bars that are super tasty but the drinks you can make more like sugary drinks and they get you through um, the day so so here's the eating frequency you're doing three seven proper meal ratios according to your innate eating questionnaire snacks daily incorporating carb fat protein you can't skip meals because it keeps the fires burning you know if your job won't let you be able to to do things as easy you use re replacement shakes or bars but just keep that frequency going and then your ratios will change as your maybe as your scores are changing so you're always checking your so remember everyone's different so the Nate eating questionnaire, fill that out. And then the adult meal tracking sheet, there's a form that goes with it, tells you how, exactly how to fill that out, or we can help you do that. So, <clears throat> so the main thing is plan each meal. We're talking about planning, plan, plan, plan. And then plan to spend some time at the grocery store looking at um, the labels. Eat five small meals each day, or that could be six or four for different people according to their Nate and questionnaire. Now you're you're making sure you're always staying on task, so you're trying to, you're always eating a fruit or vegetable with every meal. <clears throat> Supplement with a high quality fish oil to get necessary omega 3 fatty acids, so you're, you want to be taking some kind of fish oil if you're not eating like a lot of wild fish, but it's good to always have those on hand. Um, consume half your body weight in ounces every day, for example, if you're weighing 150 pounds, drink at least 75 ounces of water throughout the day. So that would be about eight glasses of water per day. And then reverse osmosis uh, is always a good way to do that. Uh, six, combine a healthy protein the size of your palm. So the main thing with this is, you know, if you just don't want to get too crazy about the whole thing, then do the size of your fist, do the size of your palm, and the size of your thumb, and do those for each meal. For each different one, so I mean it's just an easy way to do it. I actually like to look at the grams and figure it all out. Um, that's just the way I am. So learn to eat a low glycemic diet. So once you've looked at the, once you've learned of 
the low glycemic fruits and vegetables then you know, you're probably going to stick with those you can always add a few more but you know this seems a little overwhelming at first but it gets kind of easy so and then avoid anything with trans fats hydrogenated oil high fructose corn syrup or artificial sweeteners such as aspartame or uh, circulose these are Fake foods with nutritional value is real stick to foods that were once living, either walked the earth or grew in the ground from a tree or plant. So once you once you start doing your pH balance and then you're doing all this, you'll start it'll make you eat clean. So Epic study published in the archives of internal medicine studied twenty three thousand people. Adherence to four simple behaviors, not smoking, exercising three point five hours a week, eating a healthy diet. Uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, um, and maintain a healthy weight, BMI less than 30. And those are adhering to these behaviors, 93% of diabetes, 81% of heart attacks, 50% of strokes, and 36% of all cancers were prevented. So the question is, if there was a medicine that you could take that did this, everybody would be taking it. But the, but the medicine is eating well, moving well, thinking well. So... That's what we're all about here at Back to Life Chiropractic. So let's see here. Let's move on. So we're, now we're here at the end. And so the nice thing about the whole Back to Life system is if you stick with us, eat well, think well, move well, is that now you should form the habit. Now you have the why, you have the what, and you have the skill. And it might take you a little bit while to get through this, but the main, I mean, we have a system. You have someone that will help you. It's always good to start a group and get together, but once you've done this, you're going to have a habit, and then it's really not that hard. You know, it's just learning how to do it, become a habit. But the nice thing about the habit is you're not relying on surgeries or medicines or foods coming to your house. Or, you know, it's you just are going about your life naturally, and it's just you're naturally healthy, so you're living a wellness lifestyle. So it's saving you money. You know, it's... It's it's helping you with stress. It's helping society because you're functioning properly. You can do what you want to do. So it's kind of it's just a nice little thing. So, but one of the things is sometimes even though we're giving you everything, you know sometimes if you're just having a tough time, you can't get it. We do have the Get Fit program. And it's kind of like saying, hey, we've given you just turn over your keys for a while. Let's drive your car. Let us teach you the habit, and then we'll get you back into it. So we do have the Back to Life Get Fit program. You know, the Back to Life system is we give you everything. It has the videos and everything. You can do it on your own. The Get Fit program, um, it's if someone who just is like, all right, I don't want to do all that. Or just, you know, we just do everything for you. I mean, we, we teach you everything. And then at the end of it, it's like a three-month program. By the end of it, you should have a habit, and then you can just, you know, start doing that on yourself. So some people like to do this. Some people like to do the back to life system. So, but this is available just to let you know. But you just turn over the keys, and then we skim back to you and go. All right, go for it. So that's the end of the Eat Well program. If you have any questions or comments, or if this program, this workshop, actually I think is better live. So if you ever wanted us to do it with a group of people, we'll do it at our office or um, or we can go to your place. But it's just it's nice to ask questions and things like that. But hopefully you get a lot of information and you can start eating well.